In this video, we'll review how to solve an equation that has a square root. So the example I want to look at is x minus 6 equals 5 times the square root of x minus 6 minus 4. And I'm going to solve this in two ways. So the first way, I'm going to call this method 1. And typically with a square root equation, we first want to isolate the root. So that's how I'm going to what I'm going to call this method. So to isolate it, let's move this minus 4 term over to the left. Let's add it. That'll give me x minus 2 equals 5 times the square root of x minus 6. It's actually okay if I leave the 5 right here because next I'm going to, multi I'm going to square both sides and it's fine if I leave the 5 there when I square both sides. So let's go ahead and square. Let's square this side and let's square 5 times the square root of x minus 6. So when I square the left hand side, remember I have to foil this out. This is x minus 2 times x minus 2. And if I do that, I get x squared minus 4x plus 4. On the right hand side, I have this exponent, this squared. And because 5 is multiplying the square root, I do get to distribute that exponent to both of these terms. I can't distribute the exponent if I'm adding two things or subtracting two things, but here I can. So I'm going to get 5 squared times root x minus 6 squared. And let's work that out real quick. This is going to be 25 times when I square that square root. I'll just get x minus 6. Alrighty, so we have x squared minus 4x plus 4 on the left. And actually, you know what? Let's simplify the right-hand side a little bit more first. Let's distribute the 25. to get 25x minus 150. And now let's move all the terms to one side, so the other side equals 0. So I'll get x squared. If I subtract 25x, I'll get minus 29x. And adding 150, I get plus 154 equals 0. So I have this quadratic now. So usually first thing that I do is think about how, how could I possibly factor this. And it turns out this does factor. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video for one minute and see if you can figure out how this factors. 4, 3, 2, 1, and pause it for a minute to try that. Alrighty, so hopefully you tried that. Let's come and talk about it together. So this will factor as x minus 7 times x minus 22. If you didn't quite see that, that's okay. We could use the quadratic equation. I just think it's a little bit more work. And then this gives us x equals 7 or 22. So as we mentioned at the, at the end of the last video, one of the cases where I need to check for extraneous solutions is if I have variables inside of even roots, like a square root. And we have that in this problem. So we are going to need to check for extraneous solutions. So going back to our work up here, here's our work. So going back to this work, let's check for extraneous solutions. Check for extraneous solutions. All right, so let's take x equals 7 and plug that in, and then we'll plug in 22. So it's 7. So I can either, I can plug it in at any step before I've gotten rid of the root. So I could either plug it in the original step, or I could plug it in at this step. Because even at this step, I haven't gotten rid of the root. So I'm going to plug it into that second step, just because it looks a little bit more simple to me. Um, if I plug in 7 there, we get 7 minus 2 on the left equals, question mark, 5 times root 7 minus 6. All right, so left-hand side is 5, and this equals question mark. This is going to be 5 times square root of 1 is 1. And at this point, I can see that both sides are definitely 5. So I'll put a check mark. These are equal. All right, now let's check our other answer, which was 22. So if I plug that in into the left-hand side, we get 22 minus 2 equals question mark 5 times root 22, 22 minus 6. And simplifying this, the left-hand side is 20. 
and this equals question mark five times, I get root 16, which is four. So I get 20 on the left, and 20 on the right. So these are also equal. So I'll put a check mark. Both of these worked. Okay, so our solutions are x equals 7 and 22. And our problem here, uh, both of the answers ended up working. All right, let's solve this problem one other way. So method two is going to be to recognize that this is a what's called a hidden quadratic. So let me write down the problem one more time, and then I'll talk about what a hidden quadratic is. So remember, the original question was x minus 6 equals 5 root x minus 6 minus 4. So a hidden quadratic is something that isn't a quadratic exactly. It just kind of looks like one. So it has a times some stuff being squared plus b times some stuff plus c equals zero. Once I move all the terms over to one side, if the other side happened to be equal to zero. So in my equation, I do have a term that is one of the other terms squared. Notice that x minus 6 is root x minus 6 squared. Seeing that, what I'm going to do is substitute. I'm going to pick a new variable, maybe I'll call it y, and I'm going to let y be that stuff that I see in more than one spot. I'm going to let it be this root x minus 6. So I'll let y be that root x minus 6 term. And when I substitute, so we are using some substitution. And when I substitute that, the left hand side will become, we'll get y squared. And this equals 5y minus 4. And notice, now my equation has become a quadratic. That's the goal of doing this substitution. So if I move all the terms to one side, we get y squared minus 5y plus 4 equals 0. And I could factor this. y minus 1 times y minus 4 equals 0. This was a lot easier to factor than when I did it the first way. Oh, whoops. Sorry about that. Alrighty. And now I know that y either equals 1 or 4, but that's what y equals. I need to know what x equals. So let's plug it back into our substitution. So thus, if I plug 1 back in, either root x minus 6 equals 1, or if I plug 4 in, we get root x minus 6 equals 4. And i got to solve these equations. With both of these, I can just square both sides. If I square both sides of the first one, I'll get x minus 6 on the left equals 1 squared on the right, which is 1. And if I add the 6 over, we get x equals 7. Squaring both sides in the other equation, we get x minus 6 equals 4 squared, which is 16. And if I add the 6, we get x equals 22. I still would need to check for extraneous solutions. It just so happens that the check is exactly the same as what we did in method 1. So I'm just going to write check for extraneous solutions as in method one. It'll be exactly the same steps, so I won't work it out again. But if we do, we'll get that both of these answers end up working. So we get x equals 7 and x equals 22 are our answers. So one of the main reasons why we go over problems in which Doing this substitution turns my equation into something so much nicer is because we'll see this idea of substitution show up later in the class when we talk about something called U substitution. And that you'll see a bunch in, in Calc 2. So that's one of the reasons why I'm exposing it to you now. Even though for an algebra topic, substitution is a little bit more advanced, a little bit more sophisticated. So in terms of our goals for this section, we've finished our third goal, which is we've reviewed how to solve equations. 